Next tonight, let's bring you an update on the sweltering heat wave that is being felt in southern Europe and regions around the world. Well, heat records have melted in the last few days. Let us take a look. It has been confirmed that China recorded its hottest ever temperature, just over 52 degrees in the Xinjiang province on Sunday in Spain's Catalonia region. Uh, the weather office registered a scorching, never before seen, 45.1 degrees yesterday. And let's go to the Italian capital, Rome, a record-breaking 41 Point eight Celsius yesterday. That is where our chief correspondent Tessa Chapman is for us now. Tessa, how are people coping where you are? Hi, Julian. Well, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? But I can confirm that this temperature is as oppressive, as uncomfortable as it sounds. Like It's clearly not putting the tourists off here at the Trevi Fountain, but think about it. They can go back to their hotels, take rests when they want to. Some people can't be so flexible. I've spent the day with people here in Rome going about their everyday jobs. And as you can imagine, it's as difficult as it sounds. It's hard enough walking in this heat let alone working. It's midday and 40 degrees. But Augustino and his team, who are converting a shop into a garage, must press on or they won't get paid. I am a bit worried because I've already had three hurt bypass operations. I shouldn't be out in the sun for too long, but there is no choice because we have to respect the deadline and we want to do the job properly. Yesterday, the Italian government announced a new policy for people who have no option but to work outside. If the temperature passes 35 degrees, they can claim unemployment benefit instead. How many will take it up? It's early days, but in Rome and other cities, there's been a rise in the number of people needing emergency treatment for heat stroke and related illnesses. Heat is a stress, and so it's a danger in itself. Adapting workplaces and homes to the weather must be a priority, one doctor told me. We are experiencing an increasing of hot during summer and of cold during winter. So the trend is a kind of extremization of climate. And we, we have to do something right now to protect ourselves from these changes. It's hard to protect yourself and local businesses too. Many of Fiorella's regular clients are staying inside and out of her flower shop. Rome is generally hot, but I don't ever remember a week like this. Normally I get fresh supplies twice a week and the shop is full of flowers and they're on display everywhere. But in these days it's impossible to put anything out because it's too hot. Fiorella is relying on the tourist trade to get her through. They're still out in force in Rome, but it's the people who live here, have livelihoods here, who are perhaps struggling the most. Tessa, we saw you talking to that doctor just well, then. Yes. Um, obviously, heat like this has real health consequences, doesn't it? How are hospitals coping at the moment? Yeah, it certainly does, Julian. And Rome is obviously not the only city affected. There are 23 cities on this red health alert, which means that even healthy people can be at risk. Some hospitals are reporting up to 20, 25% increase on normal summertime of people coming with heat-related illnesses or heat strokes. So the advice still is wear loose clothing, seek shade if you can, avoid caffeine, avoid fizzy drinks. The doctor I spoke to in my report said people really need to keep hydrated even when they don't feel thirsty. So try to drink every 20 or 30 minutes a glass of water. Of course, as always, it's the very young and the very old who are most at risk. So everyone really needs to be careful and for some time to come too. Tessa, try to stay cool there. Thank you very much.